Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is the first video, and possibly the last depending on how well this does, but if you could not tell by the title that is in the video, I'm making a long Furby with plush organs and a see-through stomach. That is a lot of things to do for one video, but my hubris exceeds my mortal coil and only a god could strike me down, and that hasn't happened yet, so I'm just going to keep running my mouth until someone puts me in my place. So, to do this, I got a bunch of supplies from, like, an actual spine that's about four and a half feet long, the flesh, which is this obnoxious rainbow pattern, which, uh, we, we love, we love. As a gay man, we love. I also have various organ fabrics. Now, each of these are designated to a specific organ, and when you see it all together, it's going to be great. I'm not making a brain, though, because I don't want my Furby to be a learned man. He's going to be a himbo. And we have the faceplate. Now, the faceplate, I could not get, like, an actual 1998 Furby. I know, sad. But... Y'all are buying them up, so the resellers are marking that price up, and I just... I didn't want to be a part of that, so I just got one that was 3D printed from Etsy. I'll leave the shop in the description below. By the way, do not use this video to try to actually learn how to make a long Furby. This is not going to be educational in any way, shape, or form. And if you try to emulate me in any way, shape, or form... Don't. Don't. I'm not someone you should be looking up to as a role model. So anyway, with all that out of the way, I'm going to be making a long Furby that has a see-through stomach and plush organs. I hope you enjoy the journey. Let's get into it. <laughs> So, starting out, I made a pattern because, of course, like I said, I couldn't actually buy a Furby. However, the pattern I printed was for a Furby Buddy, which, if you don't know, is a much smaller, non-mechanical version or variant. But, you know, we're just running with the chaos and making it work. Hi, so about an hour later, uh, we have the pattern for our uh, face. More or less, I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, I'm gonna add a seam allowance when I actually cut the fabric, uh, but the one thing that I'm actually worried about is the actual belly, because that's gonna be vinyl. I'm saving that step for the very end of things, because I just don't want to think about, like, how I'm going to sew that. Uh, to make sure that the Furby can actually pose and move around, I am going to have to cut vinyl fabric, vinyl fabric, so it can, like, actually ridge and, like, move, you know? Actually, like, wrap around something, because the vinyl's not going to move like that otherwise. But, yeah, this is where we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, second day, uh, the birds are fucking screaming outside, and we are going to be sewing some intestinal track. Yay! So I think the plan is what I'm gonna do is I have these two panels of, uh, rectangular pink fabric. I am going to sew along the edge right here, uh, flip it open, and then from there, I'm going to sew the entire length over to create a very long tube that we will shove in our boy so that he may pass food through his system. I don't honestly know how well this is going to work. To be fair, I don't know how any of this is going to work out, so... Don't, don't get your expectations high. When it came to sewing the intestinal track, I wasn't that worried. I mean, considering that it was just like a tube, there isn't really much you can do to mess it up. 
honestly the hardest part was flipping it inside out to be stuffed and then stuffing it you can see that i am a bit of a caveman and i change up my methodology and tools quite a bit because i thought i could use a piece of flimsy wire didn't work thought i could use this uh wood skewer that the bag came with nope ended up using a metal pole that i found somewhere i don't even know why i had it but it ended up working pretty well after about an hour and a half of stuffing and sewing we have an intestinal track <laughs> With one organ out of the way, I thought I should bust out the others pretty easily. Uh, machine sewing did not go as planned, and the organs ended up being all wonky and shriveled, and I want this to be a very healthy and happy Furby, so I decided I needed to remedy the issue by busting open the stitches, settling down with some Dimension 20, and just hand sewing all of these. And I'm pretty happy with how these came out. My grandmother, who passed away when I was young, was a professional seamstress. And I like to think that her looking down on me while I work on this project, she would be very amused with the concept. Because sewing the intestinal tracks into place was getting a little too tedious for me, I decided I'd rather take some zip ties, spray paint some of them, and fasten them together like that. Overall, I think it added a bit more of a young Frankenstein feel to it, and definitely took it away from the patchwork feel, but I really like how it looked and came out, and I was pretty proud of myself for thinking it up. Anyway, I'm using nail glue to fasten the organs into place along with the zip ties just to make sure that those corners don't pop out. I got a lot of nail glue on my fingers and let me tell you that is not a great feeling, but it was overall worth it for the effect and look. <laughs> It is currently morning, about 9 a.m. to 10 ish, uh, on the fourth day, and today we're being very ambitious because today I'm going to be trying to get done the body, the belly, get the organs inside, stuff it, sew it up, make the faceplate, and attach it. Essentially, I'm finishing my Furby, and I know that's a very ambitious thing to say and try to do, but my hubris has yet to be checked by God, so let's get into it. I got to the point where I started making the head, and the head came out fine and ended up being pretty good and something I was proud of. However, when I went to line it up with the organs, that's when I knew a bitch fucked up. So we now have like a head, a little like head. There is a problem that I am running into, and that is the intestines compared to the tube of 
that I'm going to have to make to fit the head. So I'm probably going to need to recut and glue and, you know, I knew there were going to be some problems going forward, uh, but you know, we're just going to deal with it and get this bitch fucking done. Thus began a very tedious hour of detaching and re-gluing intestines. While doing this, I also got some of the fluff stuck to my nails with the glue, and that was not a fun experience, let me tell you. However, with that out of the way, I could finally start back up on the body, which I did very quickly in order to get this bitch done as fast as possible.
Okay, so literally all we're waiting for is for the faceplate to dry. Uh, while we're waiting, I'd like for you guys to see the absolute destruction that has taken over my room while I, uh, have been working on this project. I'm... I am very tired. I have not slept for about three days straight. And... Uh, we're so close to being done, and I'm so excited to see the final product. Okay, so we are in the Target parking lot. We are about to go in. We are going to look at the pride section and maybe something else. I noticed that were, there were plenty of people coming in, so let's cause some nightmares. I'm here with my lovely mother. You want to say hi? Hi. Uh, and we have the finished product that is Daffodil Soup, the Coxstruction Worker. Basically, he is just a string of 1900s to 20th century homophobic slurs, and I love him. So, uh, let's go in. gay agenda. Going to Target uh, was pretty great. I got so many dirty looks from the parents there, and I took a moment to teach Soup about his very in-depth gay culture. Uh, now Soup, this is a very important section of the store for any young gay man. It, of course, is when they discover that they are, in fact, a homosexual. So, uh, now we are just going to be showing this little bastard the primordial soup that he came from, which is the Joanne's fabric. You're gonna be a Jamaican. Hello. <laughs> Going into a Joanne Fabrics, I definitely felt more accepted there by the people. I took a moment to teach Soup about the flesh that he came from and reminded him that there is no true god nor true creator like man is, and it was just a very good and enlightening experience. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dog. I hate that little mutt, and he has been ruining this shoot for about an hour, so let's just get into it. So, this is the final product. This is Daffodil Soup, the construction worker. I love him so much. He is about four feet, ten inches tall. And he is an absolute, like, unit in terms of how, like, fluffy his whole diameter is. I will say, surprisingly, uh, this thing is, like, a great, like, th great stuffed animal to, like, cuddle. This is definitely a comfort thing. And I, <laughs> this thing, like, helped me get down from a panic attack. So, we love him. He is a support. Furby. Anyway, as you can see, his organs are like mushing around up there, which is fine. I love the imperfections. I'm probably going to be doing some mods to him pretty soon. I I definitely want to like get his eye chips in because as you can see, it's just like the uh, plastic that I painted on. His ears are floppy, which we could like stick a wire in, but I don't know. And I'm definitely going to be piercing him and giving him a necklace to cover up his trache tracheotomy scar. But, you know, would it really be a craft I make if there weren't, like, some flaws or imperfections? I, I genuinely think that's, like, the best part of these things. Because I think it's the flaws that makes them unique. And, you know, I just, I love him. So, let it be known that on May... 14th, this 
beautiful boy was born. And almost 13 days later, as I push a lot of stuff to the side while making this video, we finally celebrate his birthday with the traditional birthday cake. Um.